Hey, church family. It's time again for our daily update and devotion. As far as updates, you may have heard that Governor Lee has extended our stay-at-home orders through April 30th. And so there's still no groups gathering um, unless they are essential business, like your grocery stores and those things. Also, they've recommended that all Tennessee schools remain closed for the remainder of the school year. What's that mean for our students, for our teachers, for our community? I'm not sure. I don't know if anybody really knows. Um, only time will tell. But what it does is it gives us a couple things to be specifically praying for. Continue to pray for those who are maybe lost their jobs or in the process of losing their jobs um, or struggling during this time of staying at home. Pray for our essential employees, our doctors, our nurses, our first responders, all those involved in dealing with the COVID-19 cases. Uh, pray for us as a church. What are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to gather? How are we to be faithful to uh, the call that God has put on us as believers? I'll be honest, I'm really considering and praying through um, how we can continue to meet, how we should do that, drive-in services, all those things. I'm going to ask you to join me in praying about those and what we need to do. Also, be praying for our children for our students, for our teachers, um, as this uncertain time with school. Teachers are sending home schoolwork, some online, some packets being picked up. Students, Some students are doing those, but some students aren't. Uh, you got grades you got to consider, graduation, um, promotions, uh, classes that build, all those things that are behind the scenes that we may not be dealing with right now, but there are people dealing with those things. So, if anything, we have more to pray about and more specific things to pray about during this time. So I encourage you to do that. So those are some of your updates. Now, for our devotion today, as a disclaimer, Proverbs chapter 5 through 7 deal a lot with developing a sexual ethic. So if you listen to this out loud with your children around, you don't want them to hear about sexual ethics and the things involved in that, then you may want to wait till a different time or put earphones in so they don't hear that. I just wanted to put that disclaimer out. So the next few sections are going to be dealing with our sexual ethic as believers and followers of Christ as we seek wisdom. So with that disclaimer, um, let's get ready to begin our devotion this morning or this afternoon. So our devotion for today is in Proverbs 5. We're going to look at verses 1 through 14. So let's read those together. Proverbs chapter 5, it says, my son, pay attention to my wisdom. Listen closely to my understanding so that you may maintain discretion in your lips, safeguard knowledge. Though the lips of the forbidden woman drip honey and her words are smoother than oil, in the end she's as bitter as wormwood and as sharp as a double-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps head straight to Sheol. She doesn't consider the path of life. She doesn't know that her ways are unstainable. So now, sons, listen to me. Don't turn away from the words from my mouth. Keep your way far from her. Don't go near the door of her house. Otherwise, you will give up your vitality to others and your years to someone cruel. Strangers will drain your resources, and your hard-earned pay will end up in a foreigner's house. At the end of your life, you will lament when your physical body has been consumed, and you will say, How I hated discipline! And how my heart despised correction. I didn't obey my teachers or listen closely to my instructors. I am on the verge of complete ruin before the entire community. All right, so what is this talking about? First of all, he talks about saying, hey, pay attention to my wisdom. Listen closely to my understanding. But then in verse 3, he transitions here. He says, though the lips of the forbidden woman drip honey, and her words are smoother than oil. There's a forbidden woman mentioned here. Now, as a backstory kind of things, I have it written on the board here behind me, right there. Uh, King Solomon, we find in 1 Kings 11.3, that he had 700 wives and 300 concubines. Now, Solomon disobeyed the Lord when it came to his sexual ethic. He had 700 wives. Just that. I can't even imagine, um, you know, just all the honeydew list from 700 wives, right? Mine's a mile long and that's got one wife, right? Um, but joking aside, what you have here 
is you have someone in Solomon who left wisdom and multiplied wives when Scripture clearly taught that especially the king was never to multiply wives. He was to have one. That was God's design for marriage. One man, one woman married together forever for as long as they both shall live. So Solomon is speaking from experience here. He's like, whoa, 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 be careful. Be wise. Store up with understanding. Don't follow the forbidden woman. Well, there are many sins. In reflection upon this and reading this, I, I, my thoughts kind of went to this. There are many sins that plague our society today. We can name all these different sins, different um, things that we say are, ah, oh, these are wrong, these are bad, these are difficult. But I believe one of the most devastating sins, and yes, I'm going to call it a sin, in our society today is sexual immorality. The sexual, and as I was thinking about this, I started thinking the sexual morality in America, I say morality in America, alone, just America, has produced some of these things. It's produced divorce, abortion, human trafficking, a multi-billion dollar porn industry, rape, pedophiles, and a hookup culture. This is just a few of the things that the sexual morality of the American culture has produced among us. But with that being said, in that reflection, were the Jews of the day of Solomon or even the Romans in the day of Jesus, were they really much different? Well, the short answer is no. See, we as people have been battling over a sexual ethic since the time we were pushed out of the Garden of Eden. You can go through the Old Testament and you can read in rape, human trafficking, prostitution, pedophiles, divorce, abortion. They have been around all throughout. Just read the Old Testament. Start in the book of Genesis and read through and you will see just sexual immorality running rampant. So we can see that since the Garden of Eden, when we were kicked out, since we've sinned, we as a people have battled and struggled with a sexual ethic. When I say sexual ethic, what I'm saying is what we deem is right sexually and what we deem is wrong sexually. We all have a sexual ethic. We all have a standard in which we live by. Our American culture has a standard. Just like other cultures, in like Brazil, they have a, a culture. China, they have a sexual culture. You know, Germany, England, all these places. But what we're talking about here is our American culture. Our sexual ethic is pretty abysmal. Again, because we produced some terrible things from our sexual morality our sexual ethic. Well, I want us to focus for just a moment on that word forbidden. When it says here, be careful of the forbidden woman, that word forbidden. See, there's something that we as Americans have to admit, that there are some things, even as Americans, we are free to participate in. As faithful followers of Christ, we are forbidden. Our faith should always override our earthly nationality in our earthly cultures. Simply put, being an American should never enter the equation as a Christian. Now follow me for a second. It isn't Christ first, America second. Like I'm in a proud American second. It is only Christ. We do not share our allegiance. Our whole being belongs to Christ, even our sexual ethic. And because of that, some movies, TV shows, internet sites, places of business, images, um, actions are forbidden for those seeking to be faithful followers of Christ. So for us as believers, there there's are some things forbidden, even though our American culture says it's okay. But again, for us, it is Christ. It is his kingdom that we are living for. And so some things that our American culture says is okay is actually forbidden for us because we are trying to be, or hopefully we are trying to be, faithful followers of Christ. Now, what does this mean? This does not mean under any circumstances does this give us liberty to mistreat, hate, or be violent with anyone with a different sexual ethic than us. We are to act as Jesus did. We are to love 
all people. Yes, we are to speak the truth, but as 1 Peter 3, 15 through 16 reminds us that we are to always be prepared to give a reason for the hope that we have within us, but we are to do that with gentleness and respect. So in conclusion, we are to seek the wisdom of God when it comes to forming and fashioning our sexual ethics. Your and mine sexual morality is important. It will impact every relationship in your life, whether you want to admit it or believe it or not. Your sexual morality, your sexual ethic will impact every relationship in your life. So, what do we need to remember as believers? That Jesus is our wisdom. Jesus has a plan for his people. It is far better to limit ourselves to live within the will of God. It is better, I want you to remember, it is better to limit ourselves so that we can live within the will of God. So you must decide which is better, Jesus or the world. When it comes to your sexual ethics, that's your decision. Is it Jesus or is it the world? Again, we don't share our allegiance. Our allegiance belongs completely and fully to Christ. He alone is who we go to to form our sexual ethic or our ethics concerning any situation ever. Again, believers, as strange as it may sound, it is not Christ first, America second. It is only Christ. That's how we're going to be able to battle and stand up in this sexual, immoral culture that we live in. And yes, the American culture is sexually immoral, according to God's standard. According to Scripture, we live in a broken sexual culture. So we need people who put Christ first to be a witness, to be a light, and to be able to speak the truth with gentleness and respect and loving people. Seek Jesus. Allow him to determine and to form and to fashion your sexual ethic. I hope you have a great evening, and I look forward to talking with you again tomorrow.